Hello everyone, this is Tech Talk Universe. Black holes are the most mysterious objects in the universe. At the center of a black hole, there is an unexplainable singularity. The term singularity has only been used twice in astronomy, once for black holes and once for the Big Bang. Since both have singularities, could it be that black holes are the universe and the universe is a black hole? Are we living in a black hole? To understand the secrets of black holes, we need to start at the beginning. Astronomers believe that black holes are produced by the explosion of a star, but not all stars that explode become black holes. The current popular theory is that stars have three states after an explosion. The first is a white dwarf, which is formed when a star with a mass between 0.5 and 8 times that of the sun explodes. The second is a neutron star, which is formed when a star with a mass between 9 and 25 times that of the sun explodes. The third is a black hole, which is formed when a star with a mass greater than 25 times that of the sun explodes. The mass of the sun is incredibly large, 330,000 times that of Earth. The mass of 25 suns combined is even more terrifying. After the explosion, the outer layer of the star is ejected, leaving only the core. The core then rapidly collapses and shrinks under the force of gravity. At this point, the strong nuclear force no longer has any effect, and a black hole is formed. The density at the singularity of a black hole is so high that it is difficult to imagine. According to the theory of general relativity, massive celestial bodies cause the curvature of the surrounding space-time. However, at a singularity, the space-time curvature approaches infinity, as shown in this image. It's like singularity has created an infinitely deep pit with no bottom. Light cannot escape from this point, but where does it go? One theory suggests that the intense gravitational pull of a black hole warps time into a spatial dimension. This could mean that light entering a black hole might travel to the past or the future. This is also why we cannot see light from outside a black hole, as it no longer exists in our present space-time once it enters the singularity. If light were to enter a primordial black hole, which formed in the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, it could potentially travel back over 10 billion years in time. However, it's imperative to note that these are all speculative ideas. This is because general relativity fails at the singularity, and scientists do not know for certain what happens inside a black hole. So how did humans discover black holes? The discovery of black holes began with mathematical predictions. In 1915, Einstein published his theory of general relativity. A few months later, a German physicist named Karl Schwarzschild used Einstein's equations to calculate the first exact solution. The formula has the form of an equation that produces a singularity at ER equals sign zero, where the space-time curvature diverges to infinity. Schwarzschild proposed that there might exist a dark star in the universe which could suck anything passing through it into its gravitational pull, even light. He died a few months later, so he couldn't explore his discovery further. Soon, other scientists discovered that the equation had not one but two unusual solutions, one at r equals sine zero, and the other at r equals sine ers. Both of these solutions seemed to be singularities. How could a black hole have two singularities? It took scientists decades to understand that these two solutions represented the two most mysterious parts of a black hole, the singularity and the event horizon. The event horizon is the outer boundary of a black hole, and anything inside it cannot be observed by an outside observer. This is because the gravitational pull inside the event horizon is so strong that even light cannot escape. But would a black hole's gravity suck everything around it, including our solar system, into it? Not necessarily. Even if there were a small black hole inside our solar system, we wouldn't need to worry. For example, if we use the Schwarzschild radius equation to compress the Earth into a small ball with a diameter of 9 millimeters, a small black hole will be formed this small black hole will still revolve around the sun. However, if there are other intelligent life forms in the solar system, they will immediately notice that the moon is behaving strangely. This is because it seems to orbit around a massive point. 
If these extraterrestrial beings had advanced technology, they could calculate that there is a micro black hole in the middle of the moon's orbit. This illustrates that the maximum range of influence of a black hole singularity is the boundary of the Schwarzschild radius. So don't worry, unless an object collides with a black hole, it won't be sucked in. Let's talk about real astronomical observations. There are several pieces of evidence that confirms the existence of black holes. First, there is the phenomenon of gravitational lensing. When astronomers observed the constellation Draco, they found two galaxies that looked the same. We've heard of twin sisters. I've never heard of twin galaxies before. Scientists were very surprised. But after a careful study, they discovered gravitational lensing. This is because there is an invisible massive object between the distant galaxy and Earth. And when light passes through this object, it reflects and produces multiple images, just like the principle of a lens. So there are no twin galaxies, but rather two images of the same galaxy. Astronomers have deduced that the massive object in the middle is a black hole. The second piece of evidence is the quasars. Quasars are a mysterious phenomenon in the universe. The essence of quasars is the extremely bright nucleus of a galaxy, which is also called the active galactic nucleus. These quasars are very likely to be black holes. But wait, aren't black holes supposed to be black? So how can they emit such bright light? It turns out that these black holes are constantly consuming matter, such as stars. Some of the stellar matter is trapped around the black hole, forming a high-speed rotating disk called an accretion disk, which produces a large amount of light. Near the inner edge of the accretion disk, close to the event horizon, the infalling matter produces huge amounts of energy radiation, forming material jets. These are the lights emitted by the quasars. In the past decade or so, there has been an emerging theoretical model in the astronomy community. This model suggests that every galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center. For example, in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, there is a quasar called Sagittarius A asterisk, which has a diameter estimated to be around 44 million kilometers, 31.5 times the diameter of our sun, and a mass equivalent to 4.1 million suns. Although this sounds terrifying, Sagittarius A asterisk is not considered a particularly large black hole. For humans living in the Milky Way, this is a positive thing. If there were an extremely large black hole at the center of our galaxy, a large amount of cosmic radiation would bombard Earth, and life might not have arisen. There are various models related to quasars, such as the white hole hypothesis and the antimatter hypothesis. However, the mainstream view is that quasars are a type of black hole. Have humans ever observed a black hole? Yes, indeed. On April 10, 2019, scientists and engineers from 32 countries and regions around the world collaborated to capture the first ever image of a black hole in human history, located at the heart of the elliptical galaxy M87. This black hole is very large, 1,000 times the size of the one at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. The image is extremely precious because it shows the event horizon of the M87 black hole, surrounded by a luminous ring, indicating that it is devouring matter. Computer simulations also show a star attempting to escape the black hole's grip, but being torn apart by its immense gravitational forces. The discovery of the M87 supermassive black hole was a significant achievement in astronomical history. This was because it confirmed the existence of black holes and validated Schwarzschild's equation, demonstrating that there are real examples of these phenomena in the universe. Realizing that Einstein's equations make sense is such a great feeling, we can predict what kind of material phenomena exist in the universe or what has happened. Einstein is truly one of the greatest scientists in human history. The existence of black holes confirms the existence of singularities in the universe. This discovery also supports the idea that the universe began with a singularity in the Big Bang. Astronomers have proposed a fascinating question. Could the universe be a giant black hole? To answer this question, we can use Schwarzschild's equation to calculate. Astronomers estimate the total mass of the universe to be 10 circumflex 54 kilograms, 
When we plug this into the equation, we get a Schwarzschild radius of 150 billion light years. The actual observable radius of the universe is 46.5 billion light years. Since 150 is greater than 46.5, the universe may be a giant black hole. But then the question becomes, where is the singularity in the universe? Based on current observations, the space-time curvature of the universe is very close to zero, meaning that the universe appears to be flat. Space-time would be very strange if the universe had a singularity. Regardless of where we look, we haven't found one. Therefore, scientists tend to believe that the universe does not have a singularity. However, this is not a conclusive result since the Schwarzschild radius of the universe is so large and we might be too far from the singularity to observe it. As a result, the possibility of the universe being a black hole cannot be completely ruled out. At the end of the program, we introduce more imaginative speculation. Renowned physicist Stephen Hawking proposed a theory called Hawking radiation, which suggests that black holes may eventually evaporate. What would happen if a black hole completely evaporated? Some believe that the event horizon would disappear, leaving behind a naked singularity. What would this naked singularity look like? Some scientists say that the space-time curvature in the black hole would become zero and space-time would become flat. Flat space-time sounds familiar, doesn't it? Isn't that our universe? In short, the universe may be like an infinite loop, with black holes inside the universe and the universe inside black holes. Aliens created humans, but who created the aliens? It creates an endless cycle of causation, which is something that science seeks to avoid. Therefore, scientists say that our universe is not a black hole, and the Big Bang may have originated from a white hole. We'll talk about white holes and their stories in the next episode. This is Tech Talk Universe. See you next time.